Hi guys, welcome back. Today I thought I would do another gouache painting. Um, actually, I have received my Schmincke watercolors, and I did start a video on that yesterday. Um, did my swatch. These are very highly pigmented colors. I'm actually very happy with them. Not real thrilled with the palette. I feel that it was somewhat cheaply made. I've seen much better. Um, I was trying to get these to sit still and bent these so much that it was tilting my watercolors and I just thought that it was not well put together. Um, but anyway, I've got them in there now. Um, along with all my labels, I've got to put my my um, all my pigment information on and then I'm going to do a watercolor with those. Hopefully I can get this done today, but I'm not sure. But I wanted to use my Lucas paints again today. And I'm going to be using also this Kilimanjaro paper that I bought many, many, many months ago. Probably last September sometime. I've never used it. I had received when I had bought this little watercolor kit that I've showed you in other videos. It's a little leather like a little leather case that had everything in it, including water bottles. Um, they gave me a free 4x6 Kilimanjaro watercolor um, black, and I've never used it. But I decided when Cheap Joe's had a sale to try this Kilimanjaro paper. It is beautiful looking paper. Now normally, I don't think I would use 100% cotton with gouache, but I thought I had some cheaper 9 by 12 of my um, studio, Fabriano Studio paper, but it seems all I have is 11 by 14, and I keep cutting it up into small strips and small pieces for cards and stuff, which is great. Um, it's 25% cotton, but um, I decided that I love this landscape that I want to do today so much, I didn't want to put it in a book in case it turns out nice. <laughs> And that way maybe I could sell it or something. I don't know. But anyway, this is what I'm going to attempt today. It's this beautiful landscape. Do I have it tilted right? I'm trying to tilt it so that you don't get a lot of glare. Um, but this landscape, turn the brightness up a little bit. I guess it is up pretty much. Um, this landscape I thought was so pretty. Uh, so I'm going to give it a shot. The trees... Um, have like a yellowish hue on them and greens, but I don't know if I'm going to do them that way. I may change the colors up a little bit, but I love the bluebells or whatever those are. I don't know if they're bluebells or irises. They look taller, um, but whatever it is, these purple flowers are so pretty. So I'm going to give it a shot. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to use the Lucas paints again. Now, some of you may have thought my video that I did on the Lucas paints was um, a bit negative, and I apologize for that. Um, these are not bad paints. These are professional quality paints, and I am new to gouache, and I believe there's a bit of a learning curve. Um, I felt that they were a little more difficult to work with. I don't know. Maybe it's because the pigment content is higher. And so it might be easier to get a little bit of streaking with these colors. Um, but when my painting was finished that I did with them the other day, um, I had been working on... Um, hang on one second here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That's my bad one that didn't come out. Here it is. When I was working on this, at the time I felt that there was quite a bit of streaking. Um... And I'm going to try using it a little bit thicker today and see what happens. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll try it a little thinner underneath or whatever. I also want to do this other one here. And I think I might do this in watercolor. It was this beautiful picture of some blueberries hanging on a tree. And I might use my Schmincke colors for that. Um, and these are the Schmincke colors right here. So it would fit perfectly in the book. So um, we'll see. But anyway, today I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this landscape. Hopefully it'll turn out well. I got another flipping migraine. I tell you, you guys, there's never a dull moment with me. But, um, oh, this doesn't want to lay flat. Let me see. I got to bend that down. There we go. And it looks like it attaches on. Oh, no, this is not a 
this is not a block, but that is really strange. This paper, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in here. This paper has, oh no, it says Kilimanjaro on the edge. That's what it is. I thought, why does this have wrinkles all over it? Sometimes it's over on this edge. Sometimes it's on this edge. So, um... You just got to make sure when you frame that you frame a good half inch in. I'm going to pull a piece of paper off of here then, I think. And that way I won't get the other pages dirty. This paper is so thick. Maybe I won't use it. Oh, this is 300 pound. 640 GSM instead of 140 pound. I don't want to use this great paper. I am going to cut a piece in 9 by 12 and then we'll get started. You know, never mind. I think I'm going to do it in 11 by 14. I just have to tape it down to a board, though. I do have another board here. Ugh. I don't know what size this is, but it's thicker than 11. Yep, it is. So I can tape this down. And I like to tape it down to a board and not a table because when you tape it to the table, the ability to turn, to turn your paper is lost you got to move the whole darn table. So taping it to an MDF panel is much, much nicer, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Somebody was asking about this tape that I use. You can use masking tape. There's nothing wrong with using masking tape. This tape is nice. I like it. I buy it at Hobby Lobby, um, and it is just called Artist Tape. I don't know if it's a Hobby Lobby brand or what, but I really enjoy this tape, so um, that's why I use it. Masking tape, tape is probably cheaper. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out, but, um, you know, who knows? Maybe somebody can tell me, but I like it, and I needed framing tape, and they didn't have any, so when I bought bought this. They said it was acid-free, and I thought, okay, when you frame a watercolor, I didn't realize, but I learned this actually from Angela Fair in one of her videos, um, that you shouldn't, you should not tape it around all four sides when you're framing. You should just tape the edges because the um, paper needs room to expand and contract. I did not know that. I've never heard that before, so you learn something new every day. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in my landscape a little bit. I just want to get an idea of where my landmarks are. Here are the colors that I'm using today. I'm using lemon yellow, not the red. That primary red, which is pink. Um, yellow ochre, viridian green, which is really a permanent green deep. Ultramarine deep. And then the other two were um, burnt sienna and uh, Van Dyke brown. Also, I'm using the Windsor Newton uh, Linden Green, that light green I just showed you. And I'm going to use the white from the Lucas because it's not as bright a white, and I want to use that for mixing.
Now here I've mixed um, the Van Dyke Brown and my primary red, that pink color, together and um, made kind of a purplish brown for the trees instead of going with the greens and yellows that were in there. There was so much green in those tree trunks and so much green in the photograph that I didn't want, I wanted some contrast, some complementary color. So I thought if I put red in the tree trunks against the green, it would make it pop better, which is what I did. Um, then getting the light onto the tree trunks was a little more difficult than I expected. And you'll see as I go along, I keep adjusting and keep adjusting. Unfortunately, at this point, I thought my camera was running and it hadn't been. So those flowers that I put in, I've been putting in different values. There's going to be a lot of sunshine traveling across. It's really strange. There's shadows going across the path, yet it looks like the sun is coming from the front because it's hitting different sides of the trees depending on where they're at. So this photo was somewhat confusing. I just followed it exactly the way I saw it. So the lighting is exactly the way it was in the photo. Um, I put the photo or the light across the path. I lightened the blue flowers on the sunny areas and lightened the grass in the sunny areas. So you'll see the stripes from the, from the shadows starting to take place. Now here I'm laying down some paper towel to block the grass and I'm going to spray some grays of different values down on the path to make some rocks and then I will paint a few rocks in uh, some larger ones. They were not actually on the path, it was wood chips, but this was easier to demonstrate and get the texture so I went with that instead. 
let you all know my upcoming videos that I will have going on. Um, I've had a few requests. Um, well, of course, I'll be doing my Schmincke watercolor review. I've also had a request from somebody to do a painting with my um, with my Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus um, watercolors. I did a swatch test with them, one of my early videos. It was not a very good video, um, and I'm going to do it. She said that she has a hard time finding people using these for paintings, and I will say that I don't use them for paintings and part of the reason is because they're all so staining you can't really lift color very well with these paints but um, from what I understand certain colors you can but in that set that I have I think that's set number one yes Hydra set number one I have trouble with that so um, I'm going to go ahead though and try to do a painting with those Hydra's watercolors I think I'll practice a little bit first and then I will um, do them with you. Um, but then I'll also be working with the the uh, Schmincke watercolor set that I received. And um, so those things will be coming up. And I've been working on an oil painting. Everything's a mess in here. I will kind of show it to you a little bit. This is my um, work in progress. I've got a long ways to go on that. Um, but I did video it, so that will be coming up at some point as well. And um, more watercolor and gouache that you guys are requesting. And somebody else had requested some pastels. So eventually I'll be pulling my pastels out as well. And I will do some pastel videos with you and show you how to work with those. They're a lot of fun. Um, but they are messy, so, <laughs> but anyway, and they dry your hands out. I usually wear gloves, but, um, yeah, so those are some upcoming videos, and if you have questions, if the questions are getting too hard for me to answer, if I start to get too many comments and get behind on my comments, I think I will be doing a, um, a video series like uh, for what you're asking for, um, like you ask for it or something like that, uh, like the hydrous watercolors and those kinds of things. And I can answer questions and do paintings and that kind of thing. So if you do have a request, send it on to me and I will try to do a video series with those on a regular basis um, if I'm getting enough questions and things like that. So everybody have a terrific day. I'm loving these Lucas um, gouache paints now. I really have to say, using them the second time, using them a little heavier, using them in this sort of a painting, I had no trouble at all. Um, I do have to get used to the feel they don't spread like watercolor, so it's a little bit different, you know, and it's an adjustment, especially if I'm flipping back and forth between mediums, so I just have to work at it. Okay, so here is the finished gouache painting. Um, it was a little challenging. I'm going to have to fix the trunks a little bit. Um, it's strange working with these colors and then trying to change the lighting on the trees, and the light was coming kind of straight on but a little bit at an angle so it would hit trees in different ways which was very odd um so i just got to get that cleaned up and then i think i'll be about done with it so i hope you enjoyed it as you see i tried to draw the shadows down and across in stripes just like it was coming um with the path and the flowers being lighter and darker a little bit so um I think this Lucas gouache is pretty good. Now that I've had a chance to use it again, I will continue to use it and continue to try new things, but um, I had no problems with streaking or anything, so I think it was operator error yesterday, and my second impression is that this, this gouache is very good. I also went to a blog trying to help somebody out with their Karen Dash gouache, um, who was asking me a question. Um, it's a brand I have not tried. I've only tried three brands. Two of them were student, and this is my first professional brand, well, along with the Windsor and Newton ones that I have. But um, I went to a blog of James Gurney, and he had gotten some great information, but he also listed what all he uses. He mixes his gouache up all the time. He uses 
Holbein, he uses um, Karen Dash. Well, he has Karen Dash, but he said he hadn't tried it in that blog. That's probably an old blog. Uh, Karen Dash, Hol Holbein, Lucas, like I have, he uses. Um, Windsor & Newton. Um, there were a couple other brands. But anyway, he liked the Lucas also. And when I retried it, I noticed that I didn't get the streaking that I was getting the first time. And I was putting it on a little bit thicker. So I think that this was operator error. I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off of this so we can see the finished product. Um, oh, shoot, I didn't fix that tree trunk. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave it. But maybe I can always retape it and go back to it if I have to. But... Um, it's always nice taking the tape off and having a finished edge so you, you don't have the mess around the edges. I love seeing that because it makes things look better, you know. Um, I've also tried to use pen over this in my sketchbook. And I'll tell you what, it's hard to write in pen over gouache. Um, for some reason, it, I guess it just lifts it up. But anyway, here is the finished, the finished look. And... I hope you all enjoyed it. Have courage, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great day, everybody. God bless.